Good afternoon. I am Sabrina Odom Edwards. I'm with the North Columbia Business Association, and I welcome you to the Noma Trestle District, and also to Warmouth, who was the first restaurant and bar snuggle in the Cotton Town neighborhood to come to this community six and a half years ago. So I am very excited to welcome our mayor, our council people to this area where people pursue their dreams through the good and bad times with small businesses. I realize how important it is to have a friendly process in place to invite anyone who would love to start a business. And I know how being a small business owner myself, how it is a struggle to start your own business. So I am very excited here to hear the new plans that are gonna be implemented. So anyone who wants to start a business in Columbia, in, city, in the city of Columbia, will have a friendly process to come to. So welcome you all again to the Noma Trestle District. And I hope you come back to the Warmouth this week if you have not been here and have dinner with them. Okay, thank you so much. And now I will introduce our city manager. Well, she don't need any introduction, but um, Teresa Wilson will be next. Good morning. Well, thank you all, as Sabrina said, for joining us this morning. We're really excited. Um, I personally am encouraged to have the leadership that's being displayed by this seated council. Um, City Council has really put a focus with the staff and myself on pushing forward on some business friendly initiatives and really just a common sense, if you think about it, approach and practical mm -hmm. um, initiatives to getting things done for our small businesses, making sure that they are working in an environment and have the right conditions um, to be successful. Some of these things we have probably talked about here and there at one point or another. We even focused on it a little bit, thinking, well, we, we can roll this out in one corridor. And as we continue to talk through that, it really, from a common sense perspective, again, makes a lot of difference for these initiatives to be for all the city, for all the businesses and all the districts and all the corridors. So giving it a little bit more time, and with a little bit of fresh voices and faces on council who are certainly focused on it, we have definitely put the time in as staff with our council and it's been um, you know, a lot of good work, productive work together. And I think now this summer being able to roll it out, get some feedback from you all as small business owners is going to serve us very well. And I'm looking forward to you hearing about these practical common sense approaches to making sure that we are making, ensuring the conditions are right for uh, our businesses to be successful and that they're solutions oriented and that we as staff are being very open to helping you figure things out and not being in your way. So that's really the gist of it. And I think that you're gonna hear a lot more about it um, with our next speaker who is of course, um, you know, someone who's very used to working under these conditions to make sure economic development, the development and businesses grow. And that is your city councilman from District 4, Mr. Joe Taylor, and our former South Carolina Secretary of Commerce. Mr. Taylor. Well, thanks, Teresa. And, it's, and let me just say, welcome everybody here. It's good business folks and press folks and utility folks. I mean, small business and big business. Uh, welcome to North Main Street. Surrounded by the four famous bees in Columbia. I see bass, brim, bourbon, and barbecue. So let me tell you, you know, I get the honor today of kind of going through the changes that we're, we're, we're in the process of making or have made uh, that I think 
makes this probably one of the best days for, for all business, but especially small business growth in Columbia. Um, you're going to see on these posters around, you'll see it outlined, and I'll just take a few minutes and run through each one so everybody's aware of it. And then after, after we're through here, all of us will be available for questions. I mean, the first is on-site parking requirements are being waived for, for all buildings, new and existing, under 7,500 square feet. I know y'all went through it down here. And, and let me say, we're following a practice that, uh, I, I, that you see other university capital cities, Raleigh, North Carolina, Fayetteville, Arkansas, where, where we really want to cease to become or cease to be a city of parking lots. You know, more capital investment, more tax base. And frankly, in the past, what we've done, and too many times, we were, and I see my man nodding his head, we forced small businesses to go and rent spaces to meet our on site parking requirement. And that's just less capital they have to run, up, operate, and grow their business. So we're saving significant, I think, monthly um, rental costs. The second is grease capture costs. We've had a history here whether it's good or bad, of requiring the most dramatic grease traps that you could do, that it sometimes can cost as much as seventy-five dollars to $100,000. I mean, that's a deal stopper for small business folks. And, and what we've done working with our water and sewer department, I see Clint Sheely, our, our, our manager of that department, assistant city manager over here, is we've worked to eliminate the water. Well, first, let me say this. What we've done is we're working with, our, with your plumbers and your engineers to make sure the system that you need for your place will work. In other words, it's not just a $75,000 grease trap anymore. It can be a series of grease interceptors. We're thinking like a big city. I mean, if you're, if you're in at downtown Atlanta or New York or somewhere, it's not that you can go dig the street up and put in a grease trap. And, and new technologies are out. So from an environmental perspective, we want to make sure you collect the grease but from an economic perspective, we want to make sure it's not a deal killer for you to not be able to start your business up. Jeff Palin, raise your hand, Jeff. Jeff runs assistant city manager for finance. For me, I think this is, this is one of my, my favorite of all, even though it's really not got a monetary deal attached to it, but we're gonna make getting your business license a whole lot easier. You know, I tell people our country got started because of people didn't like taxes, and I'm sure people don't like tax returns, and I think the fact that we've asked everybody here for too long to show us your tax return before we give you a business license, we're going to trust you now. It's all, you know, we're going to make it where it's easy for you to get your license. You don't have to give a day or so up, and Jeff has assured us all that by this fall or by the fourth quarter that you'll be able to do everything online, and I think that just it really takes a big headache away and, and makes things easier. We're going to make uh, renovations and remodeling a lot easier. Unfortunately, we've had some cases where um, a perfect example was a, is a new automotive shop uh, in the central business district where, where we made you, if you made your outside of your building look really good and you invested in it, you would have to bring your landscaping requirements up to what the current, the current rules were. And that caused us in lots of cases to take away parking places and things like that, which frankly sometimes even had a negative result where it caused you not to have the on-site parking requirement that we used to have. So today, if you're doing, if you're going to invest in your building, renovating it, making it look better, you'll, you know, you'll be able to keep your landscaping as it is. You'll not have to be compelled to bring it straight up to, to, the, to the new standards. My favorite of all and again, this is where I would, I would again, uh, thank Clint Sheely and Teresa Wilson for working hard on this, is we're eliminating the water and sewer capacity fee or expansion fee on, on meters less than four inches. So if you buy a building on North Main, take this, this building here. It was an automotive shop. It used to be, if you convert it from an automotive shop into a cool little restaurant like this, you would have to pay a change of use fee, which could be as, as much as thirty-five or, or even $45,000. And we've eliminated that. And I can just tell you from a, personal, from a personal perspective, I've watched people walk away from us on, on, on hospitality opportunities because of that. On bigger meters, we will, you'll get credit for what the service was there to begin with. 
It's a different approach. I don't think it will have a negative fiscal impact at all. As a matter of fact, I think it will have a positive fiscal impact because the deals we lost before we'll get now that pay more taxes, hire more people, buy more water, pay for more sewer. And if you have questions about that afterwards, Clint will be right over there. And I would just say the last thing we're doing too is we're, we're taking a, a whole new look at economic development and how we operate it here. You know, bringing, we expect in 23 to bring recruiters in here that will work for the city, that will, that will go out away from Columbia and bring that capital back here. I mean, concentrating on urban economic development. I think too many times, and again, I saw this at Commerce, everybody wants to go chase what we call chasing buffaloes, airplane manufacturing plants, automotive manufacturing plants, but we're not gonna be able to put one of those on North Main Street or in Five Points or on Gervais Street. But what we can do is we can put hotels, restaurants, corporate offices, call centers, things that work in a downtown environment. And we're gonna concentrate on that. And we're adding in project managers to match with those recruiters. So whether you're an existing business that's going through a permitting process, a new business or a new person coming to invest in Columbia, there will be a dedicated person on that economic team that can help you through the process. Uh, we saw it work and have seen it work extraordinarily well at the state level. And I am extremely excited to see that here. I mean, like I say, I think this is a big day for small business. I think it's a good day for all business. And uh, I want to thank our staff for working hard on these things. These are, frankly, these are some of the things, the reasons that I ran for city council is to make our city as easy to operate in, as easy to start a business in as anywhere else I've seen. And frankly, uh, if we can just fix these property taxes on, on small business, and get our permit and process shortened up, I just think we'll be the, the next great success story in the South. Thank you. And I guess, Ms. Herbert, I get to introduce you, right? My favorite city council member, the representative of District 2, Ms. Tina Herbert. Joe, thank you for that awesome introduction. Um, so no, I'm really excited to be here. Um, one of the first things is because this particular building, Warmop, is a City of Columbia project from my old OBO office, but it is an example of the things that we can do with good financing and good support for great ideas and sustainability because we don't, we don't want businesses just to start. We want them to be able to stay and be sustainable. So I'm super excited about that success. Um, and then one thing that we know is that startup costs for small minority and women-owned businesses can be a complete barrier, complete barrier sometimes, or delay a project. And so by implementing the things that we're doing today, I am hoping that that will allow more small minority women-owned businesses to be able to open up, particularly around, along my North Main Corridor. And then uh, Sabrina, uh, maybe to help Sabrina out with, uh, back in the day, Sabrina used to have to bring all the complaints, all the complaints from the business community with NCBA. And I'm hoping that with some of the things that we're doing, we won't have, you can have more fun and not bring us the complaints from the city businesses. Um, so I look forward to working with my fellow council folks. Um, as we finalize a lot of these. Joe, great leadership on our economic and community development. I love economics because I love money um, and I love community development. So this has been a pleasure working on this and I'm excited about the future. Good morning, everybody. I am Will Brennan. Um, I'll introduce myself since uh, Councilwoman Herbert. <laughs> uh, District 3, so... Uh, Proud to be here today and so proud to be a part of the Economic Development Subcommittee. Uh, a large thank you to Ms. Wilson for all your work um, on these initiatives, uh, to the mayor for your leadership on these initiatives, and to my fellow council members for making this happen. But most importantly, I see our city staff huddled over there. Thank you for uh, taking on the challenge that we put in front of you, um, how to make it easier to start and grow a business in our fantastic city. Um, all signs are pointing to historic growth and population in our state, our county, and in our city. Um, not just recently, 
but uh, in the near future. Uh, with growth comes challenges uh, that we need to keep up with uh, as a city and as a city council and as a city staff. Um, we need to keep up with our need to grow efficiently and effectively deliver the basic services that our residents and businesses deserve. We need to keep up with providing the foundations for, for innovation and talent to spread their wings uh, in our city. We've got so much talent in our, our grade schools, our tech schools, our higher education institutions. We need to continue to grow those foundations to keep that talent here to start a small business. Innovate with us here at the City of Columbia. It's tough, as mentioned earlier, to start a business in general. Um, startup entre entrepreneurs and small business owners have a tough road. From concept of a business to jumping head first uh, into what is a passion project for most small business startups. Finding the funding, going through the, the permitting and licensing outlets uh, it's a challenge uh, a lot of times, but, but we're here to, to help make that easier for you as a uh, small business owner and innovator to get to turn that open for business sign on. We are open for business here in the city of Columbia and look to help our small businesses. Any hiccup in that process can, can turn off that innovative spirit and we recognize that. So uh, shortening that process, making that process less of a headache and easier is something we are continued to be committed to and we're going to continue to work on that. Uh, you know, I represent District 3, um, though I've, I've been to the Warmouth many times. I see a uh, hunter-gatherer high IPA up there on tap, which is a District 3 representative. Uh, we're very fortunate to have the Vista, Five Points, Devine Street, Millwood Avenue, Rosewood Drive, and the Garners Ferry commercial corridors in District 3. All these are great districts that are looking for small business, excuse me, small business growth. Uh, and we want to help to track small business and innovators to these districts as well as our entire city. Uh, so the new business stormwater credits, streamline business license process, the grease trap assistance program, on-site parking changes, and the city commitment, this is my favorite one I think, Councilman Taylor, the city commitment to marketing our assets regionally nationally and how about internationally with your Department of Commerce experience? Let's, let's do it, let's look for, let's reach for that, for that investment on all corners of, uh, of, the, of the planet. It's a great start. Um, you know, you've heard me say it many times, the only reason city and local governments exist is to give you the citizens of this wonderful city the best quality of life. And we're gonna continue to do that through these efforts, um, uh, making small businesses welcome in the city of Columbia. So uh, at this time, I would like to introduce uh, Ms. Jean Cecil Frick, the current president of the Columbia Chamber of Commerce, a great partner in this process. Thank you, Will. And thank you, Mayor Rickman and members of council for your commitment to improving policies and procedures at the city that will continue to make our community more business friendly. On behalf of the Columbia Chamber, our board of directors, and the 1,200 businesses we represent, both large and small, these changes are vital to the growth of the city's economic base. We all want to foster an environment that allows existing businesses to expand while also creating an environment that welcomes new businesses. Far too often, we hear from our partners about the burden of doing business in the city, whether it's lengthy processes, needless requirements, or just too much red tape, not to mention high taxes. We can do better. And today, we are taking an important step forward in taking care of our business community by increasing the speed to market from the moment a business applies for a permit to having the permit in hand. The measures being announced today further enhance our city and the integrity of doing business here. We want all businesses to know not only are they valued, but they are being heard. These initiatives are another reminder that the City of Columbia is open for business, 
we all want to see our businesses succeed. The Columbia Chamber is thrilled to see the, de the city develop these measures on behalf of the business community, and we also want to publicly thank you for your efforts with the Tax Modernization Committee. We look forward to seeing more business-friendly recommendations come out of those efforts. Again, thank you, Mayor Rickman, City Council, and City staff for your commitment to identifying and resolving some of the challenges of doing business in the city. We look forward to expanding our economic base by implementing these business-friendly measures announced today. On behalf of our partners and future partners, please know how much the Chamber appreciates the city's efforts to foster a more business-friendly environment. We welcome the opportunity to move our business community forward together. Thank you. And now, Mayor Rickman needs no introduction. Thank you, Jean. Thank you, everybody, for being here. You know, it's amazing when you listen to the conversations that are going on and the excitement that's become. But since we've started talking about more business-friendly and being open, every corner of this community I go through, I hear people excited about it. There's a new sense of energy, and we need to harvest that energy and continue to help support all these businesses. But if you think about it, we've had Swift brands locate in five points. We had a ribbon cutting for uh, paint and sip right up here on the street. We have Uncle Willie's opened up. We have um, the strudel on um, Lady Street. Then we ended up looking at all these businesses from the Falafel King on continuing to grow. It, it's very exciting to go to a lot of ribbon cuttings, even though I get ribbed quite a bit about it. I love it because if you think about it, nothing but wings has opened up. We've, we've had all these people who are investing and are excited and the public supporting them. And that's the energy we want because we are an incredible community that supports its small businesses. I'd be remiss if I didn't take the, this moment to thank Joe, Tina, and Will, and Teresa for all of their hard work. And of course, our staff but more so, I also need to make sure that I, I take a minute. Reverend McDowell's here. I want you to look behind me right now. You have all four districts represented here. That's how important the initiatives that we're doing is to every corner of our community, that we have every council member representing those districts here today. And I can't tell you how much uh, I appreciate all the efforts that everybody's doing together. If it's the city staff who are all here in support, who want to make our, our city have a much better quality of life, more opportunity to do business and change those conditions. But I also want to make sure everybody understands that, that we're, not, we're not done yet. This is just the beginning. We want to encourage the economic growth. We want to get more people in the city center. You know, there are other cities in our, in our state that have upwards of nine and 10,000 people living downtown. We're at about 3,000. We need to encourage more, more growth downtown. We need more people living, breathing, eating, living right here in downtown. But to do that, we gotta still continue to focus on changes. You heard everybody talk about processes. We need to make sure that permit processing is easy and predictable. Make it real easy for us to step in. I think the, the part of that we have to look at, we just spent thousands of staff hours, public meetings, and a huge investment in new zoning laws. We need to use those zoning laws. We need to give the staff the ability to do their job so that they can move forward. We need to take those hurdles that are still in the way out of the way so that people can easily start their business. As you remember, today's currency is time. Time is money, folks. And it is important for everybody who's trying to open a business, who's trying to make an investment, who's trying to move forward. Time is money. And then a second, we've talked a lot about modernizing our taxes. And obviously that's very important because that's the taxes on apartments, small businesses, and investments. You know, as a homeowner, we benefit from low taxes. But those, those folks who are renting, those people who are trying to buy a second, second home or a rental property or making an investment, they're suffering because we can't offer the small guy any type of tax incentive. So we need to levelize the playing field. 
all the work that the tax modernization committee has done is going to be something that this summer we're going to be meeting with all our partners so that we can implement this sooner than later just the fact that we're having this conversation today folks i've heard from more people willing to invest in our community because they see a change coming conversation is the first step and then i think in the next part we have to do I'd be remiss if I didn't take a moment to thank Chairman Overture Walker, Vice Chairwoman Jessica Mackey, and the entire Richland County Council for not moving forward on any tax increases, for really stepping back and going, let's try to work as a community so that we can be competitive. Our goal is to be the number one county in South Carolina and Columbia to be the number one city in South Carolina. And we can do that with growth, with investment, but we can't talk about attainable housing. We can't talk about affordable housing or workforce housing, job initiatives, and investment growth if we're not tackling the issues that have been holding us back. And that's why we're here today. This is step one and we're gonna to continue to work, but we're only gonna be able to do it together. And that's why you see this united. And, and I once again, I have to, to thank council City Council has been working forward and it has not been about my district or your district. It's been about Columbia as a whole community. And Richland County has been just astronomically supportive of working together to bring the county along so that we're all working together. So I wanna thank the business community for their support. I wanna thank the, the and small businesses. I wanna thank all the folks who are involved from our neighborhood leaders to our, our elected officials to continue to move Columbia forward. And um, with that, I wanna thank everybody for being here. I do wanna mention to all the media, all council, all speakers are available for any questions. But folks, this is step one. Thank you for being here with support. Columbia is open for business, so let's go recruit.